You guys, I match those. Hey guys, it is Tuesday, June 30th. I just finished my first run of the uh, 95 mile a week. Uh, 95 to 100, we'll see uh, how I feel. But uh, probably gonna be 95 miles. Here's that run right there, 10 miles. Um, pretty easy. Uh, wasn't really feeling all that great from the end of last week. I did an 18 mile long run, and then a 20 mile long run after, or not long run, I had an 18 mile day and then 20 mile long run after being at altitude and doing quite a bit of mileage in the back end of my week. So taking the beginning of this week maybe just a little bit easier. Um, I have a double today, just six miles, so 16 on the day. Tomorrow I might do a little bit of a workout in the medium long run, just uh, get the legs moving just a little bit, did some strides today in that 10 mile run. And yeah, I mean that's kind of uh, how it's gone so far. Just uh, did some stretching. And now I gotta go roll out a little bit, get something to eat, because it's already three o'clock because I always slept way in. And yeah, catch you guys later. All right, so my knee and Achilles have been kind of been driving me crazy, so on my right leg. So I definitely gotta stretch out quite a bit. Um, that's another reason why I didn't do the workout today. So stretching now. I already stretched my calves, got those really well, really good. Um, with bent knee and straight knee. I'm gonna show you guys actually what that looks like, because that's pretty important. Um, to stretch, when you stretch your calves, to stretch both calf muscles, which is the gastroc and the soleus. And they are stretched. Mouse, leave it. Mouse is playing with a beetle. So when stretching your calves, lock out your knee like this, stand like a step, push that heel down. That will grab one of the muscles there. I believe the gastroc, if you do this with the knee locked out, then you bend that knee, do the same thing, really push the heel down, and you can stretch that soleus, which will really uh, help with Achilles problems in my opinion. Is the soleus always seems, at least for me, is always super tight and causes those Achilles issues, so stretching those guys out, really important. Alright guys, off the of busy streets, so now you guys can actually hear me. Um, going to these two parks, next to my house, I think it goes about like six miles total to go around the last one completely and go around half the other one. But yeah, I mean, going to my, I'm on double right now, so essentially, I'm one sec, crossing the street. Alright, essentially, what um, I want to talk to you guys about right now is, I guess, when it is appropriate to kind of run through tweaks. So, when I started this run, I was super achy in my knee, my right knee, and my plantar fascia was really bad. Also, not wearing the best shoes for that with these uh, beacons, but I wanted to try them to see if they helped. They don't help. <laughs> But guy insoles in there, so I give myself like 10 minutes if I'm like injured. I want to know if I should run through it. If it doesn't warm up in like 10 minutes or so, then stop. Don't proceed. So I got about seven minutes in, felt way better. It changes very rapidly, like in 30 seconds or so. I started to feel way better. Right now I hardly even feel it. Either one. So I'm gonna continue to run because I'm feeling pretty good. All right, cross the street again.
Jesus, son, I want to be kind. Love and I, they had a concert here. I don't get how you can have concerts right now. Plus, there's like a bunch of people all in one spot. Like, doesn't make any sense to me why you would have a concert right now. That kind of thing that kind of gets to me a little bit. Like, we can't do stuff, but oh, we can have a concert. I don't get it. All right, just left the first part onto the second one. This one I go all the way around. Both of them have like little ponds or lakes in them, so you guys can look to that too. All right, made it to park number two. I use the porta potty. Oh, I always have to pee in my afternoon runs. Actually, I pee pretty much every run. Too much coffee. All right, let's talk a little bit about doubles. So, I do mention doubles in a couple of other videos, but there's a quick rehash. Typically, with doubles, I don't see a point in doing them unless you're going. Like, normally when I start hitting 70, 80 miles a week, that's just how I start doing doubles. Um, besides that, I'll try to use singles from my training but the purpose is like it spreads your mileage out so like for example most double days I'll do a workout the morning of so that gets more intensity so they're not clock off too much on the mileage but with that you have to make sure you get at least like 35 to 40 minutes in for the double because then you just like then it's just a shake out and you probably only should be getting like 10 to 20 minutes in max 20 for a shake out, I'd say 10 to 15. But yeah, with, the, with the doubles, typically I had to go right about 46 miles for me. 40 minutes, still hit the aerobic benefit of the double. So, um, yeah, so keep in mind when you start in those higher mileage weeks, you definitely need doubles. I probably don't know anybody who can do it without. Even then, I feel like your quality of your workouts. But it's not for if you go too long, so it's important for quality effort, or for your quality effort too, so about to leave this like a park, so heading back home. Another thing on doubles, I try to keep them very easy, but not so slow, I'm increasing impact from going up and down more, just fast enough so I can go get good uh, horizontal momentum um i'll come out maybe make a video on all that later something i learned from one of my last coaches in college but try to keep um the impact pretty low on doubles so that means not a high intensity stuff either but also not too slow so it's like that you gotta find that sweet spot should be very easy very easy to talk like i am right now should barely be breathing hard all right Cut some more footage. Guys, I match those. on my watch, it's going to slow down my average. Okay. Maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds per mile. So I'll be right there for like a minute or two. Man, my, now I'm 
Man, now my left hamstring's starting to tighten up a little bit. All right, mileage, I'm used to you. So you be very careful. And so it raises up mileage. You be ice bath in the night. Try to cover all those injuries. I'm almost done, so. Let's finish up. Stretch it really well. I haven't been stretching like I should. I love Brussels sprouts. Don't eat enough of them though. do this but putting some uh, garlic butter on there. Normally I use olive oil but we're gonna try this since I have some extra that I use in another uh, dinner. We're gonna try we're gonna try garlic parmesan basil. We're gonna see. And then salt and pepper and olive oil but I gotta melt this first. Added the garlic butter. No salt and pepper. I think we'll pepper soon. I think I love right now. All right, gotta wait for the Brussels sprouts. So I'll eat an avocado because it's kind of going bad. You guys can see right there. I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go, right there. And then the most important part of the meal and post run. You know, your beer hydrates you more than water. That's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't care. Beer of the episode, pretzel, pretzel assassin. Love this beer. Tastes like a pretzel. Literally tastes like a pretzel. A little bit. I'm the aftertaste. But still got some beer taste to it. So don't expect just pretzel. But Denver Beer Co. Uh, great beer company, really close to where I live too, so. So good. So good. Alright, here's the other half of my meal right here. It's a dinner we made a couple nights ago with Abby. So it's basically just uh, chicken, a bunch of like lemon seasoning and stuff. Uh, Couple of tomatoes on it, that's all that's left. On the tomatoes, we make great tomatoes. Uh, super good, though, one of my favorite meals for sure. And this is like a breaded, we made like a breaded chicken. So, awesome meal, love it. Alright, guys. Up in my bath. It's somewhat cold, a little cold than you like. I dumped the whole. Thing of ice in the fridge in here. I had a water and cold, but the water didn't get super cold here, so. Um, ice is all melted. But, pro tip for ice baths don't do the whole slow getting in things, get in right away. And focus on <laughs> something else because it's gonna be super painful for about a minute. Like, a uh, mental toughness can be Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, guys. It is now Wednesday, July first, and headed over to Sloan's Lake, which is a very popular place in Denver. Um, get some physical activity in. So, headed over there. Um. It's like three miles away from my house, so medium long run today. 
16 miles. And yeah, catch you guys when we get to the park, slash lake, whatever you call it. All right, made it to the park. I'm not gonna go to the bathroom again. Too much coffee again. It's a little bit later in the day, it's a little bit hotter. I got too, uh, too involved in editing videos. I drink a lot of coffee when I do that too, so. Um, yeah, I guess heat training. It's not too hot though, not too bad. I've been worse. All right, it's kind of windy here today, so I'm trying to talk when I have a tailwind so you guys can hear me better. Um, today I was gonna do medium long run with the workout, um, but I think I'm gonna scratch that because I, my hamstring's still kind of hurting, so better be safe than sorry, especially when you're raising up the mileage quite a bit. So today, just an easy 16, but um, medium, like it's good to get like workouts in some longer runs. That's a geese here. <laughs> um, yeah, I could get some workouts in longer runs sometimes, especially for marathon training. It teaches you how to run on tired legs, run fast on tired legs, mainly. I kind of really starts to use that other more aerobic system and rely on that when you're um, hurting, so, which is more effective. Than using the anaerobic system but much slower too so um, so keep in mind get some cool footage of the lake I think I'm gonna have to do two and a half laps. I'm gonna have four and a four laps because it's two and a half miles around each time. Okay. So I am currently a lap and a half, in, almost to the half a point. So I'm at 7.34 right now. We'll see. All right, halfway down with my last lap, and it's just a grind. I mean, it's been taking over two hours. About an hour and 30 right now. Actually, maybe it's under two hours. But essentially, I mean, the 200 miles is all about going out for hours a day to run. But halfway down the last lap, and then I'll head back. Yeah, my legs feel pretty good. Just getting a little bit of fatigue in them. Tons of running mileage, I guess. But I don't feel exhausted. I thought I could have done the workout, the hamstring felt good, but oh well. I think it's gonna sacrifice. Alright, luckily I have a tailwind on this really long, long uphill. It's like over a mile. So that's good. Still not to breathe though. So on the way back, it's not done. After this uphill, it's almost downhill. Or flat the whole way back. Super nice, but here's what the uphill looks like. Just part of it, it does it zigzags up and yeah. So now I gotta go downhill. Woo! Getting hungry, ready for lunch. You guys miscalculated just a little bit. Um, you're more like 17 miles. Post, I'll put it right here, the run. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all right. I had to skip a workout today anyway, so extra miles not gonna hurt. I'll take it off another day. So 
Yeah. Pretty good run. Hope that hamstring is better tomorrow. I'll take care of it today. So, see you guys tomorrow.